Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 where you'll notice we're in a kind of strange situation here and let's just proceed forward a little bit here. I believe I staged these. Oh, these are shoots that I'm staging. Okay, there's a staging issue. But you can see here that we are indeed and are all of these parachutes destroyed at this point? This is claiming that they are, but I never saw them deploy, and they shouldn't have deployed. So we're going to not arm these. Uh, we can repack this from here. Right, that seems fine. So we're going to repack these, make sure that these are all nice and disarmed for right now. So I'm going to repack this one, and we're going to repack this one as well. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to jettison off these. So we're going to decouple these. And you can see how slow we're going here right now. We are going, I think, slowly enough to survive. Now, this was not pretty. We lost attitude in some really awkward ways. So that's definitely noted. But I want to bring us around to prograde, if we can. And I want to get rid of all of this. Hopefully it doesn't break anything too badly as it separates. That looked good. But yeah, I want to bring us around to prograde at this point. You can see we're increasing in speed, and we might want to have something to help deal with that. But uh, we're currently sitting in retrograde, and we're certainly still having some frame rate issues. Hopefully, once all of this goes away, Hopefully that'll be fine. So I jettisoned all of that when it was in a relatively safe position. I'm not super content with our current setup. Now, one thing to question is, are these actually enabled at this moment? They are, apparently. Okay. So that's noted. Can we bring this around or at least slow down a little bit more? So, we're currently heading to retrograde. I'd like to try to even this out, because we're falling right now. So, I would like to bring this around to prograde. But I think arrow forces are currently too great. I would expect to see heat start to build up here pretty soon. We are traveling at like 750 meters per second. But I would also expect for us to be able to get this uh, into prograde eventually. I would expect us to start to slow down here pretty soon. This is definitely higher than the terminal velocity should end up being. Yeah, I think when this recalculated, that did something. But we're currently going backwards, and we're accelerating. But we're in a pretty decent orientation for this. So I guess let's just put ourselves into retrograde. Wait, this is now flipping around? No, it's not. Okay. We are slowing, though. Okay, so we at least get to see what our terminal velocity is. This was not pretty, and there's a couple of alterations I want to make, but this does prove that this is possible in this configuration. There were some changes made, for sure, and I want to have pinned open... Let's actually just pause for right now. I want to have pinned open the drogue shoots here. So that would be... The Mark 12, I believe? Yes. Because I want to be able to see when this shoot safety would be considered safe. It's currently unsafe, and we're going to want to get that brought around. Now, if we're falling like this, this is completely fine. Landing in this orientation, I don't actually have a problem with. But you can see we are managing to level out here. We'll run out of electric charge eventually, and that is something... Ooh. Okay, we're definitely leveling out a bit. Yeah, we are definitely leveling out. The question is, are we going to run out of electric charge before we get down to the ground? We're down to 400 meters per second. I am not confident that I will be able to consistently reproduce this result at this moment. So that is... Um, not necessarily great. Let's just continue to hold this here and let our airspeed continue to drop. Actually, it is trying to go around to prograde. 
yeah. Let's just hold here for now, and let's see what this ends up looking like. But this is proof positive that this is possible. So we're currently nine kilometers up, and to be clear, we are actually overseas, so that's not too bad. And we can see our speed is dropping, so this is pretty good. We still see that our shoot safety is unsafe at this velocity, which is marginally surprising, but I guess not terribly surprising. But let's just let this drop on down. We ran out all of our fuel in the descent, and we'll cover exactly how that ended up happening. I did go a little bit higher up in order to counteract some slightly lowered thrust to weight. So this came down from 120 kilometers. But yeah, we'll cover that here in a bit. So for now, I'm interested in seeing... Oh, our drogue shoots are now considered safe. Okay, let's arm our drogue shoots specifically. We should not arm our main shoots just yet. Let's get those drogues out. Parachute was destroyed. What? It says it's safe. I mean, we can repack it, but it definitely said that it was it, it was safe. Okay. We'll repack these, I guess, and uh, I guess we shouldn't deploy them yet. We'll let this continue to slow down a bit. Wait. I did see shoots there. Okay. That's very strange. So let's get these drogue shoots deployed then. It's still saying shoot safety safe, and it's saying that for all of these Mark 16 Rs and the Mark 12 Rs at this point. So are we going to have more shoots destroyed by arrow forces? Possibly. I see that our mains are all deployed. I only see one drogue here. Okay, so we'll repack these drogues again. And we'll rearm them. Now one of them was destroyed. This seems rather buggy. Shoot safety, none. Okay, there we go. We'll let that tick forward. We'll deploy that. That one was also destroyed by arrow forces. It was destroyed again. This time it wasn't. Okay, I have no explanation for that, but sure. I don't know that four shoots will be enough. That is our main goal to find out at this point. I'm going to turn our SAS off, and our shoots were destroyed again. Huh. So our shoots shouldn't be being destroyed. We can repack them. However, that should not be necessary. Why are we running into this? This must be a bug. Okay, I'm going to... Now it's showing as unsafe. Huh. I wonder why that might be. Now they're showing as safe, so let's go ahead and deploy them. This is the Mark 12s and Mark 16s. Deploy all of these. Okay. It must have just been very, very borderline. So those shoots are there, and we should be seeing the drogues deploying fairly soon. This is still overseas, apparently. Yeah, I guess we are. There's land right here. So those drogues are deploying now, and that should slow us down some amount. The mains deploying are what should really slow us down, though, in theory. Again, I'm not confident that I can reproduce this. I think that this may have been a bit of a fluke, but we had much less heating in this configuration. So that is definitely noted. The mains are deploying, and I'm noting that we are currently traveling pretty fast. We're slowing down a lot, though. Okay, so this is terminal velocity of somewhere around 50 meters per second. Okay, 40. This is 30. Is this slow enough to splash down? It might be. 
We're now at about 25 meters per second. And we are slowing down a little bit here. But terminal velocity with the chutes seems to be about 25 meters per second. Okay. I don't know if we'll survive this splashdown at 25. It's going to be dicey. Well, it looks okay. Cool. Now, of course, we are going to, I think, be sinking here. And that is expected at this time. But that is a survival of bringing this down. That's really, really good. And yeah, we are sinking as expected. So I'm going to take this back to the VAB. I want to make a couple of very, very minor alterations to this in order to hopefully be able to control it a little bit better. It's going to be dicey, I think, no matter how we do it. But that seemed relatively doable. The main issue is, is it reproducible? But I think it is. So let me go over what we've got here. That was a successful test, and that's what we needed. But I do want to make a couple of very, very small alterations. Alteration number one. Well, let's let this load in. Okay. There we go. Alteration number one. I'm getting rid of the landing gear. We do not want to come down on land. I'm getting rid of this. This is just dead weight. So the landing gear is going away. Now, let's go over real quick what I did to make that happen. I extended these tanks. That's literally the whole thing. I extended these tanks and I moved us up to coming to starting our burn at 120 kilometer. So at 120 kilometers, we started the burn and then we just burned straight down. And that got us going slowly enough that when we lost attitude, we didn't have these three parts burn out. That's really, really good. And apparently the parachutes are enough, but I kind of feel like we're, I guess, in some sort of a garbage collection phase. There we go. I feel like I want a couple of additional parachutes. Specifically, I would like to have a chute out here. And I would like this to be a, um, not a drogue, a radial mount parachute. I feel like the drogues are kind of useless, but I'm going to put a radial mount parachute right out over here. Okay. Now, I'm not sure where exactly that went here. Okay. We'll move that down to be with the rest of the parachutes, which apparently we have a garbage collection. Eventually, KSP will get caught up. There we go. And we'll just put this with the rest of the shoots. There we go. Two additional shoots should be enough, and I wanted them out here to give us a little bit of rotational stability. So that should hopefully, hopefully, do the trick there. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to go into aerodynamics, and I want to use the weight that we saved on those... Uh, on the uh, landing gear. I want to use that to add some grid fins up over here. So we're going to do this in, in theory, 8x symmetry. But that kind of breaks at some points. We'll see if that happened here. So I'm going to put this in here. Um, I don't think it broke. Let's deploy these real quick just to be sure. Yep, symmetry looks good. So the grid fins are going to provide us a little bit more drag, but more importantly, they're going to give us some control surface there, which will help with the with the losing attitude. We're going to tumble, I think, no matter what. We just have to accept that. But if we do it like this, that should, in theory, be okay. Now, we do have these air brakes here. I don't think that's going to interfere too much with these grid fins, so it should be fine. That'll give us an extra little bit of drag, but more importantly, a control surface way up here and way out as well. So that should be reasonably good. I do want to go into our action group manager. Uh, eventually, KSP will get caught up. Eventually. I think the game may need a restart. <laughs> It'll get there eventually. We're just trying to open the action group manager. We want to add these into action group one. And uh, there we go. That only took a solid like 30 seconds to open. 
cool. So we're going to go into Arrow, and we're going to grab the GRFN 250s here. And we're going to deploy control surface for all of these. So I'm just going to do that, and we're just going to go through all 16 of these. And turn on deploy control surface in this action group. So that should give us a little bit more authority to hopefully stop that tumble a little bit. But the tumble is kind of useful. It allows us to jettison our heat shields. Which is actually a useful thing to be able to do. Eventually, the game will get caught up with this deploy control surface. And we're going to need to build a launch vehicle to get this thing up into orbit. And then we're going to need to deliver it to that 120 kilometer orbit. So that'll be very interesting. But, I mean, lag aside, it shouldn't be that complicated. However, this game is not very optimized. That's for sure. So we're just going to continue to put these into the custom action group. And once that's all done, these should deploy along with all of our other heat shields and arrow brakes. And that should be wonderful. Okay, we'll get that one going. And this one. Eventually, we've got another garbage collection stall. Eventually. There we go. And finally, apparently this one was already on. That's suspicious. Okay. Uh, sure? Sure. So at this point, I want to bring this thing vertical. So we need to grab the root part. Or actually, can we just go to the workspace orientation and raise it vertical like this? We're going to have to rotate the whole thing. Okay, that's fine. We're going to want to lift this vertical from Kerbin. So this is going to be... I should probably have made a save before grabbing this in retrospect. Okay. Let it go. I'm going to make a save. There we go. <laughs> now we can grab this. And we're going to need to rotate it vertical. Like that. Okay. So, with this vertical, I want to have the camera be centered over here. We're going to need to get a bunch of height here. So let's lift this and bring it up to about here. And we're going to need to build a lifting mechanism for this. And that's going to be interesting for sure. We've got a lot of pylons that we can use here to lift with. The question is, how many are we going to need? That is indeed an interesting question. So... First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a save with this in the vertical orientation. Because we shouldn't need to do re-entry tests anymore. I'm fairly confident with the addition of the grid fin that we're going to be okay in getting this down to the surface. In theory. In theory. We know it's possible at this point, And that's all I need. All I need is the knowledge that we can do it. And that's wonderful. So... What we're going to do now is I'm going to put in some decouplers. So we're going to grab a TD37 stack decoupler. Actually, this should be in the medium size, shouldn't it? I think we need TD25s here. So a stack decoupler goes here, like that. And then we're going to need to put in a stack decoupler in at least some of these. But first off, what I want to do is I want to create ourselves an adapter tank as soon as the game gets caught up here. This is going to be tedious at this rate. But that's not shocking. Okay, so we're going to grab ourselves an XL adapter. We're going to adapt this up to XL size. Uh, that's going to need to go from large size. So we need to grab this adapter as well. I want these to be fuel adapters. So that'll be okay. We will deposit that guy right there. And then this guy, we're going to attach right below him. Perfect. Then I'm going to grab two XL tanks is the idea here. 
Now, this is going to have terrible thrust to weight. <laughs> no doubt about that. So, I would like to have two XL tanks. I mean, we're going to need some sort of a pushing vehicle here to get this to EVE. Now that I think about it. But that could maybe go right here. And we can just build this and move it a little bit later on. Yeah, that's a that's a theoretically viable thing. So let's grab another XL tank as soon as the game gets caught up. There we go. And we're just going to splat this guy right here. And then the idea is each of these are going to be lifted by a ridiculous amount of vectors. Because that seems to be the only way that we're going to ever be able to generate enough force here. So we're going to grab a vector. And that's going to go right in the center here. Like that. Obviously, this vector is not going to have very much thrust to weight. Why is it saying it'll have zero? That's definitely not accurate. I guess because it's saying, well, we have no thrust to weight. Maybe? But you're in vacuum. It should have some delta V. Well, we're currently uh, frozen, so we'll get there in a moment. Okay, 384 meters per second. Yeah, that, that's, that's about what I expected to see. What we need to have is we need to have this be at zero altitude, but it needs to have a thrust to weight ratio of like 1.6. That's going to be very complicated to do, and we'll see what that ends up looking like. So we're going to need to get ourselves a lot of vectors here, for sure. I'm going to put, for now nine vectors down at the bottom and that's not going to be enough thrust to weight i'm well aware of that so these eight are going to fire here in this stage this is claiming yeah this hasn't updated let's try to force an update on it okay this is going to take a little bit so what's this going to be in terms of its thrust to weight 0.09 <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I can't say I'm shocked about that one. So that is reasonably fine at 0.09. We have a lot of other pylons, and we're going to need to utilize them. The question is, are we going to use all of them? I suspect the answer to that is no. We're probably going to want to make fairly heavy use of SRBs as well. So if we were to put in, say, some large radial decoupler manifolds down here, like this, and then we were to put in some SRBs, just as a hypothetical here, I'm just wondering what we would get out of thrust to weight on this. If the game would load the other ones. Uh, <laughs> sure, I guess this is fine. Maybe it'll get there eventually. Maybe. The game is really struggling right now. It could clearly use a reboot. But we'll get that in just a, a couple of minutes here. So that's fine. Let's put this in. And all of these, of course, are going to need to be moved into this same stage. So the question then becomes... What is the thrust to weight of that stage? So if we do this and we force an update here, it's claiming zero, but that's not true. We'll have to uh, get that to update. Okay, let's try that. That is a very annoying sound indeed. It's still claiming zero, and it's also claiming a burn time of zero. This is not true. We don't know what the actual thrust to weight of this is. And we're probably going to want to spread these out a little bit too, but for now, that's, I guess, reasonably fine. We're going to want some nose cones on top of this, almost certainly. So we're going to grab these guys. I want to keep this fairly compact. Anytime you want to get caught up here, KSP, that would be great. Okay, so Mark 16A nose cone here. And we're going to put this right in here. Okay. The game is really struggling, but look at that. 0 0.33. Okay. So that is a reasonably good sign. So what I want to do now is I want to duplicate this guy, this entire stack here. 
I would like to increase the thrust in the center core here, but I don't know that we're going to be able to do that. Nine vectors is probably about the best that we're going to get on that, is my guess. So I think that seems reasonably fine for now. But it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And a lot of this build for this launch vehicle is going to be very tedious, like this was. So I think I'm going to do the vast majority of it probably off camera, but we'll need to get this thing lifted and at 0.33 thrust to weight, that is a very good sign. That indicates that we are probably, emphasis on probably, able to simply in theory duplicate these, although I would extend this a little bit to make it be, you know, relatively flat. But if we were to put this guy, say, here hypothetically, and then merge these together so that they all fire at once. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you would end up going here. You guys would all end up going here as well. You would end up going here. And then these eight would go actually here in theory. These would all be merged together like this. So something hypothetically like that. The question is, what does that put us at? And, of course, this guy would need to be merged up here. Okay. The question is, what hypothetically does that put us at for our thrust to weight here? And it's going to be a little bit until the game calculates that. I would really like to know. This is not, of course, the final design here. But this is ballpark of what I'm angling to do. And I'll probably go for, like, every other pylon over here would be the idea. So we can see that this is now 0.51. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. So that indicates that every stack of this should, in theory, add approximately 0.2. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. We will definitely be altering some of the uh, fuel up here. And this stack is likely going to be replaced with some sort of a hydrogen pusher that is intended to bring us out to bring us out to our destination, that might be, get lifted separately. So this might actually be docked in here, and then this would be undocked, and then we would dock in the new one. That's actually an interesting idea. But for now, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we will, hopefully, the game stopped responding, but hopefully, next episode, we are going to have ourselves, uh... Okay, I guess I accidentally clicked on this. Sure. The game is very, very struggling at this moment. But next episode, we should have ourselves an absolutely insane lift vehicle here. And that should, in theory, do the trick. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge STL, Kintogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.